Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Courage the Cowardly Dog, which had its premiere on Cartoon Network back in November 12, 1999, and ended its run on November 22, 2002. This show was directed, created, and written by John R. Dilworth. The co-writers were David Stephen Cohen, Irvin S. Barr, Billy Aronson, Craig Sherman, Bill Marsili, Lois Lazarus, Alan Newworth, and Gary Cooper, and stars the voices of Marty Grabstein, Thea White, Lionel G. Wilson, Arthur Anderson, Mary Testa, Billy Lou Watt, Simon Preble, Paul Schuffle, and Arnold Stang. Now, before this show came into its own entity and was coming into fruition in 1999, Three years ago, there was a pilot shown on what a cartoon show, that is Courage the Cowardly Dog and the Chicken from Outer Space, in which this pilot had absolutely no dialogue except for one piece of dialogue at the end in which Courage says, this shouldn't happen to a dog. And it was also using a lot of animation techniques and they just basically let the actions of the characters do the talking for them. So this short was quite a success at the time that three years later, this show ended up coming to fruition and it even went out of its way to win an Emmy and even get nominated for two Golden Reel Awards. That's just how strong this show is. Now, compared to a lot of cartoons from 1999 that aired on Cartoon Network, this show also had a very strong following compared to the likes of Johnny Bravo, The Powerpuff Girls, and Dexter's Laboratory. Though compared to another cartoon that was made back in 1999, Mike Lewin Og, it didn't really like, have the popularity that Courage the Cowardly Dog had, but it ended up having a sort of cult status. Though with Courage the Cowardly Dog, this show has immediately become very popular to the point where it ran for four seasons, and, well, it managed to gain such a huge fan base because of the show's horror comedy-like elements, but it also had elements of supernatural and sci-fi, drama, slice of life, and even a little bit of slasher, but not so much slasher. So the fact that this show can be able to work well with different genres, despite it being mainly animation, is just a testament to show just how strong Courage the Cowardly Dog is. In fact, when I was seven years old, I was extremely excited for this show. Heck, I even caught the pilot, The Chicken from Outer Space, and words cannot tell you how excited I was at the time, really wanting that to be its own show. And when there were promos on Cartoon Network that were being announced, well, I was just extremely excited for this. I was very much excited for this show to air, and I caught my first few episodes. I wasn't so sure which were my first episodes of the show, which were my type of gateway episodes for Courage the Cowardly Dog. But it was safe to say that I stuck with the show for quite some time, even to the point where I bought a season one DVD. That's just how much of a fan I am of the show. Of course, I also love Teen Titans, Adventure Time, Regular Show, Dexter's Lab, The Powerpuff Girls, and Johnny Bravo, and even that of Tom and Jerry, and even the Looney Tunes, but with Courage the Cowardly Dog, this is definitely something that has left a lot of things special in my heart, mostly because it did a lot of things that made it work, and I was totally pleased with, with just how it was. Yes, there were some episodes that maybe I didn't really care for, all because of personal taste. But despite that, this show managed to really keep me on the ride from 
the time I was a kid, even up till now, and I still watch a lot of episodes with such a fondness in my heart. So let's see how well the story, animation, music, characters, and voice acting hold up. So let's start off with the story. Now, the story of each of the episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog is basically like this. Courage sees something that is weird happening in the middle of nowhere. And whether it's alien invasions or monsters lurking around, demons lurking around, outside forces that want to take over the world, supernatural forces, scientific elements, or even a lot of, well, creatures that just want to either do courage harm or are misunderstood or have some type of mystery surrounding about them. And it's up to courage to find out whether this force is harmful so he could save his family, Eustace and Muriel, or if that if that force is misunderstood and wants to be befriended by either Courage and Muriel, or plainly Courage, or anything else in between. So there is never a boring moment in every episode that is told, and every force that Courage meets can either be a friend or a foe. And, well, it also goes to show that this show also relies on strong character interactions, especially when it comes to courage and even the creature of the week or creature of the episode. So there's always something interesting when it comes to the story. At most times, the misunderstood forces or even the beneficial forces would always be there to help Courage and even help Courage out of a sticky situation. And sometimes there are some enemies of Courage that have a heel face turn and become friends or begrudgingly become friends. There, the case always varies and there is nothing that is boring. There's always something exciting going on and there's always a risk that is being taken, especially if I were to be in Courage's shoes. Imagine saving Muriel every single time and even trying to save Eustace every single time, especially when it comes to an evil force coming in. That is something that can be quite daunting, but I could really see that, okay, Courage does carry the weight of the show, hence he's also the main hero, and even though he is a cowardly dog, he has to make sure that if no one's going to do it, no one can. If he's not going to do it, no one can. So he tries to make sure that everybody is okay and he's someone that, that really holds the weight of the show. Not to mention this show has a lot of quotable lines and even a lot of well-written moments that I genuinely feel like I'm attached to everything this show represents. So overall, I have to say that the story did not leave me bored. I definitely cared for all the situations that were happening, and it always leaves me excited from beginning to end. The animation is yet something that's very interesting, using a great amount of color, even though the character designs are quite simple, there's always something that will always be rather unique and will stand out. Now. The character designs on a lot of the humans are almost like this, with a lot of the humans having big feet, skinny legs, and, well, different proportions of bodies. That's what I found really interesting about the human character designs. And let me just tell you that the biggest highlight for me, or rather the highlights for me, definitely have to be Courage's reactions, and even Courage's story of the weird happenings that he saw. The animators really go out of their way to use a lot of motion and a lot of sight gags and a lot of imagery to make every reaction from Courage and every story Courage tells with such finesse and such agility that you could really really go on and on pretty much watching all these reactions and just getting something new every single time. 
What's also worth mentioning is that even though this show is mainly 2D animation, there are moments in which there can be like early CG being used or even stop motion. And at times, live action can also be used, but mostly live action cutouts being used. So the fact that this show can also use a different style of animation any single time is just a testament to how versatile this show is when it comes to, anim to animation, especially when it comes to Courage's reactions. Now, I thought that those were pure gold just right there. And even some of the scary moments, especially when there's a girl playing the violin in Courage in the Big Stinkin' City. Yeah, it starts out sweet at first, but then when she turns her face, you see her yelling like hell with eyes popping out and her hair flying all over the place and her mouth enlarged. Now, you probably will have to check that out on YouTube or even watch the whole Courage in the Big Stinkin' City to really find out just how scary it can be. Other examples of just how scary this show can be is basically in the form of the early CGI, like with King Ramses and his curse, and even that blue thing with, with it saying, you're not perfect. Yeah, that's pretty much the stuff of... That's pretty much the stuff of nightmares. So the animation really does show how versatile the show can really be. And the music has a charm that few others can compare. What makes it so charming is that, well, it uses a lot of string instruments like the banjo and even like instruments that would that you would usually associate with like with the with country music, like the cowbell, and ham boning, and the banjo, string instruments. And at times, this show also uses a good amount of classical music, much like its predecessors, whether it be the Looney Tunes or Tom and Jerry, or even that of Ren and Stimpy. So you could really see that the music really does fit well with the show's versatile yet bizarre nature. Classical pieces being used in this show were the Nutcracker Suite by Tchaikovsky and even the Ride of the Valkyries, just to name a few examples. So the music in this show really is something that you could even listen to, especially when it came to the opening and the ending songs. I really enjoy listening to them. And I especially love listening to the music of the show as well. And now let's get to the characters. The very facet of the show that I am very excited to talk about. So let's start off with Courage. Now, Courage is basically a very loyal and very kind-hearted character that even though he can be scared, he really plucks up the courage, no pun intended, to really set things straight, save Eustace and Muriel, his owners, and hope that he'll get out of this alive. So you could really see that Courage is definitely a character I really, really like because, of course, he does have his flaws, but he looks past his flaws and really tries to make something great out of himself. And even though he has his fears, he plucks up the courage every single time to really save the day and even like, make a difference when it comes to any creature that's misunderstood. He's someone that I really like, and I look up to him so much as a role model, because he's someone that, even though he can be frightened, never fails to see the good in others, and never fails to really stand strong and firm on the face of adversity. He's someone that I really root for, from beginning to end, and someone that I totally look up to every single time. And he's also someone that is also quite funny as well, especially with his reactions and especially with some of the dialogue that he says. They are rather pure gold. 
every piece of dialogue that Courage says is pure gold. Whether it's his catchphrase, the things I do for love, or or my name is not la da 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 da, and it's not, and many other things. He's just a lot of fun to watch. He's someone that I keep rooting for from beginning to end, and someone that I really enjoy watching on screen. And now let's move on to Muriel. Now Muriel is a very kind-hearted Scottish woman who at times, though she is extremely nice to a fault, isn't really always aware of the happenings that are going on in the middle of nowhere. Though at times, she can be a mama bear, especially to Courage. When Eustace tries to scare Courage, then Muriel tries to make sure that she's there to discipline Eustace and tell him that it's totally wrong for him to scare off Courage like that. She's someone that I also enjoy on screen a lot, and her running gag is that she always loves to have tea parties and always likes to make new friends, and someone who is rather rather unaware of the supernatural events that go along and kind of treats those supernatural events with nothing more than a grain of salt. But still, she definitely has a lot of fun moments and she's definitely yet another favorite character of mine because, well, I always love little old lady characters. She's someone that is very much warm and very much welcoming and someone who is just just plain fun to watch. Now with Eustace Bag, yeah, at times he can be quite a jerk and at times he can be really mean and ungrateful. But despite that, despite his unlikability, he does have some genuinely funny, funny moments, especially when he says, that's what I tell him all the time, you stupid dog, you stupid dog. That's his most iconic line, and he's just hilarious at times. Yes, he may have some mean qualities, but it's also helped because... He does have a bad childhood, mostly because he was constantly in the shadow of his older brother, Horst. His mother doesn't really care that much about him and seems to dope more on courage. And, well, you could see that Eustace has been nothing more than a crotchety old jerk who constantly scares courage despite the poor dog saving his life every single time. So even though Eustace is not really my favorite character, I kind of like him because he has some really genuinely funny moments from time to time. Now with DeLong, yeah, he's another jerk character in the show, but compared to Eustace, sometimes I kind of find his personality quite unlikable. He's, he's a jerk a lot of times, and sometimes I kind of wish that he could have gotten a lot more of a meaner comeuppance. His constant catchphrase is, watch where you're going, you fool. Yeah, he that is a pretty funny line from him, but man is DeLong kind of a jerk, even though, like I said, he can have some funny moments, but man, the dude can be such a jerk. Oh yes, and even the fan favorite, the computer, our deadpan snarker, our resident deadpan snarker of the middle of nowhere and someone who can be kind of an asshole to courage but he's a likable asshole i figured that if i do a list similar to rowdy c's top 10 snarkiest characters of all time i'd say that the computer would be on my list though i'd mostly focus on top 10 snarkiest animated characters of all time yeah the computer would Probably be on my list. Not so sure where. Maybe he'd probably peek in at number 9. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see it in a future video. So yeah, the computer definitely has a lot of fun moments. And even though you can't really see his face and you can only read through his text, he definitely uses that with such biting sarcasm and biting irony that you can't help but really smile at his antics and especially when he constantly like 
works well off of Courage, you can really see that he is definitely a fan favorite and he is someone that I personally love to watch because when you think about it, the computer is definitely someone that I always love to see no matter what the episode. I mean, his constant deadpan snarky attitude is just so freaking hilarious and his constant banters with courage is just awesome and he can also be a very useful source of information when he's not being a constant snark machine. And then we get to Ma Bag. Now, she is also kind of a fun character as well, even though there are some episodes in which she can be a villain. And, well, even though she has a soft spot for courage and even for, well, mostly for courage, she can be kind of bitchy from time to time. And another recurring character that I really love is Shirley the Medium. Now, she is a character that I definitely love. Totally up there with the likes of Courage, Muriel, and the computer. She is someone that I really enjoy because, well, she's also a deadpan snarker in her own right. And she's also someone who's very smart and very level-headed and... Even though she can be very deadpan, she has a very great sense of information and she really is helpful towards courage. And even a lot of the minor characters in the show are really colorful, really fun, and you just want, feel very entertained and invested in their presence. Like the Goose God, the Hunchback of Nowhere, the Storm Goddess, Benton Tarantella, Earl von Volkheim, that ghost from the House of Discontent, the Duck Brothers, the Chicken from Outer Space, the Son of the Chicken from Outer Space, and oh yeah, Doctor Lequack, Cats, and even the Cajun Fox. Now let's also go on to Cats. Now Cats is pretty much one of the recurring villains of Courage the Cowardly Dog, which also helps because Cats, obviously, is a cat. While Courage the Cowardly Dog, well, he's he's a dog. So the fact that Courage's nemesis is a tall, svelte cat, whereas with Courage he is a small pink dog, definitely shows the juxtaposition between these two characters. While Courage is constantly panicky and seems to lose his cool a lot, Cats is very much a cool-minded character who doesn't really let anything go unfazed. And he's also a character that is very much someone that you could really feel scared of every time his presence is on screen. It also helps with the music as well. His entrance music is also quite chilling for how minimalist it could be. But with Cats, he's definitely someone I also enjoy because, well, when you think about it, he's someone who's very cool, level-headed, calm, collected, and pretty much stops at nothing to make sure that Courage is, well, gone from the rest of the Earth. And even with Dr. Lequac, he is also quite cool and level-headed, though he uses a lot of scams and a lot of schemes in order to make a quick buck. And, well, even my favorite recurring character, who's not a villain, but also turned out to be one of Courage's allies, even though he appeared in one episode, is the Hunchback of Nowhere. He is a character I also really enjoy watching on screen, and someone that I wish I could have seen a lot more of him. With that said, all the characters in Courage the Cowardly Dog are colorful, lively, whether they be a threat, or a benefit, or just somewhere in between. There's always something interesting about these characters, and there's always something to pretty much write home about. And the voice acting is so well done, to the point of their voice actors being very much iconic to their characters. Let's start off with Courage's voice actor, Marty Grabstein. Now, Marty Grabstein is not only well known for 
doing voice work as Courage, the cowardly dog, but he's also established himself as a character actor, appearing on a lot of sitcoms and drama and even some films here and there. He is extremely fabulous as Courage. This is no wonder why he has become so iconic in his role. The lung power that he manages to give this character every time he screams or every time he talks gibberish when something bad is happening is just a testament to show just how versatile a voice actor Marty Grabstein can be. And he is definitely in his element when it comes to playing character parts, which have really helped him really play this role really well. He is definitely a joy to listen to as Courage and someone that I do hope to meet him personally one day. I do hope that he could come to a Comic-Con one day. It would be a huge blessing. So overall, I have to say that Marty Grabstein really does set the standard of how enjoyable Courage is as a character. Interestingly enough, Eustace ran through two voice actors, the first one being Lionel G. Wilson and the second one being Arthur Anderson. Now, Lionel G. Wilson started voicing Eustace all the way up to 2000, excuse me, to early 2002 or 2001. He was then later replaced by Arthur Anderson. I can't really tell which voice I really enjoyed the most, but let's just say that both Lionel G. Wilson and Arthur Anderson brought their own charm to Eustace to the point where they pretty much sounded identical. So they really did well in voicing this crotchety old jerk, and I definitely enjoyed both of their performances with Thea White as Muriel. She is such a joy to listen to. She pretty much embodied Muriel. The interesting thing about Thea White is that she used to do some voice acting as Muriel, obviously, and even some other character roles as well. These days, she's basically a librarian. But still, it's a lot of fun listening to her as Muriel because she manages to bring out a very kind and sweet nature to her character and embodied the role really well. And speaking of Lionel G. Wilson and Arthur Anderson, both of them were veteran voice actors who also had some work in television probably somewhere in the 50s or 60s, and even did some radio work as well. And with Paul Schiffler as a lot of the different male characters, I felt with, that with each of these characters, I felt like he did a really great job, especially with cats. He manages to bring out something that's cool and menacing and something that will just make you feel, well, make you feel almost at an unease just by listening to his voice as cats. With Simon Preble as the computer, he has a great amount of irony and sarcasm to work with, and he really does handle his text really well. With Mary Testa as Shirley the Medium, she handles her lines with such aplomb and with such a deadpan nature and even an otherworldly mystery to her that you totally feel fascinated with her character. With Billy Lou Watt as Ma Bag, now for those of you who don't know Billy Lou Watt, she was a veteran voice actress who basically starred in the 60s Astro Boy and a lot of the old anime of the past from the 60s to the 80s and has lent her voice to a lot of a lot of cartoons, whether they be anime or obscure animated titles. She does a very great job voicing Ma Bag and really making her a character that even though she can be kind of unlikable, there's always something charming about her. And special kudos goes to Kath Sosi, who voiced Little Muriel, and even Jim Cummings, who voiced the Great Fusili. Both of them really did their roles really well. And even with Kath Susie as little Muriel, I automatically recognized her in that voice because 
Well, Kath Susi also did the voice of Lil from Rugrats, and even Phil from Rugrats, and even Tish from The Weekenders. So her voice was automatically distinctive in that role. And what's also interesting about a lot of the voice actors in this show is that a lot of them are either character actors or were radio actors from the 50s or 60s or were also actors that didn't really have a huge cartoon resume. So it was rather interesting to see these names pop up even though they didn't share the fame that the likes of Tara Strong, Great Lyle, Kath Susie, Elizabeth Daly, Christine Cavanaugh, Candy Milo, Jeff Glenn Bennett, Dee Bradley Baker, Rob Paulson, and Jim Cummings, and many others had. But still, they managed to place their roles in their respective characters and pretty much made them stand out. So overall, what more can I say about Courage the Cowardly Dog? This show is just brilliant in everything it does. From the stories that it tells, to the animation, to the music, to the characters, to the voice acting. Everything was just so well done. And if you haven't checked out Courage the Cowardly Dog yet, then I ask you this. Have you been living under a rock? All joking aside, please go check it out. You will have a blast with watching the show. And with that said, you know what I'm going to give Courage the Cowardly Dog. A five out of five stars. It deserves all of the high marks I can possibly give it. It does have a very simple nature, but its simplicity does work, especially when it comes to the execution of its stories and characters. This really is a show I can recommend to fans of animation and even to those who love horror comedy. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in to another review. So until then, see you later, everybody.